I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. Happiness starts with gratitude. I want to talk about six things today that relate to gratitude. Embracing gratitude. It takes as long as it takes, never give up. Clear out your brain, make room for gratitude. Get a gratitude journal. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. And lastly, sharing gratitude. Embracing gratitude is all about a mindset of focusing all your attention and your mind on what you have versus what you don't have. If we totally focus on all the good that is in our life, it is like the best Teflon, the best armor to protect against the negative vibes, the negative barbs, the gamma rays, if you will, of negativity that will attack us every single day. On September 29th, 1998, it was a Tuesday about six in the morning. I woke up and I couldn't find my wife. My four-year-old son, Connor, came in and said, where's mommy? And I said, you know, I can't find her. I don't know where she is. My 14-year-old son, Kyle, came in, same question. We couldn't figure out where she was. We started looking around the house. We found her downstairs by the washer and dryer, face down. As we all ran down to find her, it didn't look good. We turned her over. She was obviously in a major amount of distress. We called 911 in a matter of minutes. There were people at our house doing everything they could to revive her. We'd given her mouth to mouth, chest compressions, everything you could to try to figure out what was wrong because something was happening as she was not breathing. Later on, one of the short fire people, if you will, came up to me and said, Mr. Brooke, I'd like to know if you want us to continue to work on your wife. We've been working on your wife for 45 minutes, almost 90 minutes. We still don't have a heartbeat. Would you like us to continue? I looked at the fire person and I said, no, you can stop. And she was dead. She was 38 years old. She had died of a prescription pill overdose. We had not only our two sons, but an older daughter as well. Dana was 38, as I mentioned. I had to figure out a way at some point to cope with that type of loss, as well as to try to parent two young sons at the same time in dealing with such a horrific event. I had had a lot of loss in my life. My father had elected to end his life earlier in the suicide. My mother had died of cancer when I was younger. A number of friends had died in the war, car accidents, and any other number of accidents. And I needed a way to cope. Along the way, I found gratitude. And as I said, and as I'll repeat every so often, gratitude helps you focus on what you have as opposed to what you don't have. It's a mindset, an attitude of gratitude that can carry you through just about anything. I found as I went through life that not only embracing gratitude was powerful, but I also realized that it took as long as it took and you just can't ever give up. I believe it's Winston Churchill, which is credited with saying, don't ever, ever, ever give up. Along the way, I'd realized that I wanted to be a speaker when I was 19 years old. Never took the opportunity to do it, but I knew someday I was going to be a speaker. Well, it took me 45 years to realize that dream to become a speaker. I was 19 when I wanted to do it. I was 62 when I finally had the courage to leave the business world and venture out on my own as a speaker and later a coach and an author and a workshop facilitator as well. Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started KFC. Mary Kay Ash, Ray Kroc, J.C. Penney, many of these iconic figures were in their late 50s, early 60s when they started their businesses. It can happen, but it takes time, and it just depends on when you stick with your dream. It takes as long as it takes. Don't ever, ever give up. Clean out your brain. Get rid of the junk. I speak about how I go to the different cul-de-sacs I see in the neighborhood, and I notice when the garage doors are up, they're filled from floor to ceiling with boxes, solid boxes. There's no room for a car. In fact, there's barely room for the people to get in to go out and check the boxes every once in a while. How are you going to put gratitude in your brain if it's too filled with boxes? You've got to get rid of the junk. There's an old saying about the windshield on the car is about three or four or five feet wide and about two feet deep. The rear view mirror is about two inches by about five inches. It's not a bad idea to take care of your life and look at your life, if you will, in the same proportion. Look out what's in front of you, where you're going. Occasionally glance back to take a lesson from the past. 
Maybe if there's some blue lights flashing, you may want to pull over. But in any case, about 90% of your focus, if not higher, should be what's in front of you. That's the windshield. That's where you're going. You've got to get rid of the crud. Let go of the items that have been there still talking to you. The 800-pound gorilla in the room that's still saying, I'm over here, let it go. It's behind you. You know, they say when you're running a race, should you be proud of yourself for how much you've accomplished so far? Or you should you be thinking, I'm still not where I want to be, and so I'm looking ahead to see what I have yet to complete? And the answer is really a little bit of both. Appreciate where you've been, but also look forward to where you're going. Embracing gratitude, it takes as long as it takes. Never give up. Make room for gratitude. Clear out your brain. Next, get a gratitude journal. I was struggling mightily after the loss of Dana and all the other losses that I'd suffered, as I mentioned earlier. And a good friend of mine says, you need to get a gratitude journal. I said, what's a gratitude journal? I had no idea. He said, it's a journal you write in every single day and you talk about what you're grateful for. So I got one and I started writing in it. I got back to the basics of things. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my sons. I'm grateful for my roof over my head. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm healthy. All the things I could focus on, it started to really change my mindset. And I noticed that if you focus on everything that you have, what you don't have becomes less important and in many cases not important at all because you're fo focusing on your abundance instead of the lack of things that you have. Up in the corner of that gratitude journal that I put together called the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal is a little saying that says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. There's something about writing. I am so grateful for my health. I am so grateful for my sons. I am so grateful for my family and friends that plants it in your brain. Surveys have been done that show that when you pipe something on a laptop or a keyboard, it does plant in your, ba in your brain. It does a little bit better, but there's nothing like a pen and a pencil to take it down and actually write it down in the way it puts it in your brain and locks it in that you can not only remember it better, but refer to it later when you want to maybe look back on a tough day that you had to see what you wrote or to see what you were so grateful for at any, <coughs> excuse me, at any given place in time. A gratitude journal is so powerful. Mine is structured so that you have the day and the date you keep track of, your daily number, your current events and special occasions so you don't have to have a diary, a couple of lines on what you're grateful for, the highlight of your day, and then on the right hand page, your gratitude tomorrow also known as your gratitude intentions. That's what you're gonna be grateful for before it's even happened. Your subconscious mind, which resides in your prefrontal cortex, cannot distinguish between what it thinks has happened and what has actually happened. When you write, I am grateful for an event that hasn't even occurred yet, and then it happens, you're programming your brain to get towards that result. I mentioned the daily number on the left-hand side. The daily number is very powerful. What you do is you assess your mood at that exact moment. How are you feeling? Taking your temperature, if you will. 10 is the best day of your life, one a not so good day of your life. And as you add that number in there and you put it, and it could be halves, you could be a five and a half, a seven and a half, a nine and a half, whatever that number might be. You place that number in there. And then as you write through your gratitude journal, oftentimes I'll suggest to people to put another number at the bottom of the right hand page to see if it's changed. So often when you focus on all that you have in life, your abundance, all the things you're so grateful for, it's amazing how your mindset will shift to one of thinking, wow, I feel even better than I did five minutes ago. And that's all I recommend it takes is about five minutes. A gratitude journal, a phenomenal tool to help you. And especially on those days when it's not going well for you, when you've come off the rails or anything has happened, there's something about a gratitude journal that really gets you back focused again on your abundance and everything <coughs> excuse me that you're grateful for in your life find yourself find your passion find your purpose i contend the most important relationship that you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself now don't misunderstand there are people that will tell me i have a relationship with my creator with god with jesus and i'm fine with all of that I'm just saying that that relationship with yourself is either 1A, 1B, 1C. It's way up at the top in terms of importance and how you see that person in the mirror and how you function in and out of your life. 
One of the things I've noticed is that people that have a strong sense of self-worth, of self-confidence, of self-awareness, just seem to navigate life a little bit better. There's something about, I noticed that this relationship we have with ourselves, I could test it and see in certain ways it happened. I had a friend that we were down in Las Vegas and we were playing the slot machines. And he wins the slot machine and he's sitting about 10 feet away from me. He starts cheering and he's raising his hands and yelling and cheering. And gosh, I'm, he's, I'm just so happy for him. And all the quarters are crashing down and, and he's going, buddy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rich. I'm buying dinner. And I was happy for him. And as I looked over there, but then I thought to myself, honestly, I thought I, I was really happy. Yes, I was. But I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me. And I thought, does that make me a selfish person? No, I don't think so. But it just shows that when we have that relationship with ourselves, there's something about taking good care of yourselves. If you want to help yourself, after all, help other people. But you got to have a good foundation to begin with. Once you find yourself, it's so important, in my opinion, to find what you're passionate about. How do you find out what you're passionate about? There's all sorts of little litmus tests that can be done. You could imagine that every day there's a million dollars in your checking account in the morning when you go check on the computer. Every day somebody gives you $5 million. You inherit this, you get this, whatever it might be. All your money issues in life are taken care of. What would you do then? That's one of the ways you can find out what you're passionate about. They say that 75% of the people in this country hate their jobs. 75% could even be more in certain industries hate their jobs. Monday's the worst day of the week. Wednesday's hump day. Thank God it's Friday. We've heard all the terms. But it's so sad when you think how many people do not find out what they're passionate about. I call myself the gratitude guy. I preach this, the definite unbelievable benefit of leading a grateful life and having gratitude in your life. I had a friend one day took out a piece of paper and he says, you're pretty passionate about this gratitude thing. And I said, yeah. And he takes out a piece of paper and he writes my name, David Brook, and then he puts down here one million dollars. And then he goes and signs it. And he goes to hand it to me. And he says, I could make this good. I don't know if he's worth a million dollars, but I know he's got a fair amount of money. And he starts to hand it to me. But before he hands it to me, he goes, oh, wait a second, hold on a second. Before I give it to you, I have to ask you one question. If I give you this, you have to stop immediately being the gratitude guy. Would you do it? It took me about a second. I said, no, no, I wouldn't do it. He says, you know what? You found your passion. That's what I wish for you. I wish for you to find your passion. You get a great connection with yourself. You find what you're passionate about. I contend you'll probably find your purpose. Now, I'm not sure about this, but I think everybody at some point in their life wants to find their purpose. Why are we here? What were we designed to do? What, were we, what was our plan, if you will? And I'm sure there's some people that maybe it doesn't occur to them, but I think most of us at some point want to do that or want to figure that out rather. And so I think if you get a great relationship with that person you see in the mirror brushing your teeth, you figure out what you're passionate about, I think it'll probably lead you to your purpose. And nothing can be more fulfilling. I am so blessed at talks and seminars and workshops and keynotes and things that I do when people say, you changed my life, you saved my life, you transformed my life, the story you told me about this, the gratitude journal, whatever it might be, it is so affirming and actually is quite emotional. Oftentimes I just wanna go, thank you Lord, thank you for this opportunity to impact lives in a way that people are telling me that's what they received from hearing about gratitude. I say often, somebody will say, well this is a great, you're a great speaker, this is a great message, or how you did this talk, or the stories, or whatever it is, and I tell people the same thing. I'm just the messenger. The message is the important thing here. It's gratitude. How you focus on it, how you maintain a focus on it, is so critical. It's like my one minute video I send out every Monday. Four in the morning goes out to a lot of people, and this is 60 seconds on a different topic on gratitude every week, and it's designed just to put a little bug in the back of your mind and thinking about gratitude and how you should be focusing on everything that you have in your life and how better, how much better rather, it'll be if you continue to focus on your abundance and not your lack. Lastly, sharing gratitude. There's nothing quite like sharing something that you found that you're excited about. 
So many people I know are always talking about, I want you to see this, I want you to see, read this book, go to this movie, enjoy this with me. I saw this the other day, it was so cool. They want to share it. There's something about knowing that somebody else is alongside of you to experience something that makes it so powerful. So sharing gratitude is something that is just like anything else. When you see what it does for you, you want to help other people. It's one of the things I love so much about sharing the message it's at talks, small and large, is people, again, coming up and saying, gosh, that meant so much to me. I understand so well how gratitude works and how it's helping me. And then writing in this gratitude journal just solidifies it that much more. But it's interesting, though, about sharing because you find that in certain cases, if you do something by yourself, again, it just doesn't have the feeling. I remember years ago, I'd gone to uh, college with a bunch of fraternity brothers, and we made this decision to go skydiving. And so I was kind of the ringleader, so I called, I made the reservation, and it was Saturday at 10 o'clock. I always remember that. There was, I think, seven or eight of us. And, and on about the Monday before, one or two of the fraternity brothers called in, said I'm kind of sick, and then on Wednesday a couple more called, <coughs> I have a little bit of a cold, I don't think I'm going to be able to make skydiving. So finally, Saturday comes around 10 o'clock, I walk up to the counter, the guy looks at me and goes, can I help you? I said, uh, yeah, uh, reservation for Brook, party of 10, and he looks over my shoulder and he goes, where are all your friends? And I went, uh, I don't have any, nobody showed up. And he goes, you don't have any friends? There were supposed to be 10 of you. I went, yeah, nobody made it. But I went ahead and did it by myself. When I was done, the guy goes, nice job. I landed, I lived, I didn't die. The parachute opened and I'm walking to the car and he goes, thanks a lot. They went, thanks. And I'm kind of like talking to myself, God, that was sure great. There was nobody to share it with. There's something about sharing that expands the experience far beyond anything you could do on your own. So think about that and think about sharing gratitude. Embracing gratitude. It takes as long as it takes, never give up. Make room for gratitude. Clear out your brain. Get a gratitude journal. Find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose, and finally share gratitude. You employ those six steps, it can have the ability to totally transform your life. It transformed mine. Thank you.